On the 1st of July, NASA detected a mysterious object speeding toward Earth, and some actual bona fide experts think it might not be your typical space rock or maybe any kind of rock or a natural phenomenon at all. What if I told you a true interstellar visitor just cruised past Mars with a fleet of orbiters and rovers watching it like hawks? Meet 3i Atlas, only the third confirmed object ever seen entering our solar system from another star. A new telescope built to track fast-moving space objects in Chile has caught a comet from beyond the solar system moving across the sky. Every once in a while, space throws us a curveball that rewrites textbooks. In 2017, it was 1i Oumuamua. In 2019, it was 2i Borisov. And now, 3i Atlas. This is not a regular comet from our Oort cloud. It's a traveler from the deep between the stars. And on October 3rd, 2025, it made its closest approach to Mars, giving scientists a rare moving laboratory to study how other planetary systems build comets. Multiple spacecraft at Mars, plus solar observing missions, are pointed at this thing to squeeze out every possible measurement. 3i means the third interstellar object ever confirmed. Atlas credits the Asteroid Terrestrial Impact Last Alert System Telescope that spotted it in early July 2025 from Chile. As soon as its orbit was computed, astronomers saw the telltale signature, a hyperbolic trajectory on a one-way ticket through our solar system never to return. That provides definitive evidence of an interstellar origin. It's visibly a comet with a coma and a tail, unlike Oumuamua, and early estimates based on Hubble and other facilities suggest a nucleus somewhere in the hundreds of meters to a few kilometers range. That's big enough to drive a healthy coma, but small enough to keep the nucleus unresolved in most images. So we infer its size from brightness, gas output, and dynamics. Its behavior is consistent with that of 2i Borisov, though it originated in a different stellar system. 3i Atlas passed about 29 million kilometers from Mars on October 3rd. That might sound far, but for a fast, dusty comet, being inside the same planetary neighborhood is a gift. Mars currently hosts an entire observing fleet, NASA's MAVEN, Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, and Curiosity and Perseverance rovers, ESA's Trace Gas Orbiter, and Mars Express, all capable of contributing data from ultraviolet and infrared spectra to high-resolution imaging and sky surveys. The idea is simple. Use Mars orbiters and surface assets as a forward-observing post to watch an interstellar comet up close as it brightens on its approach to the Sun. This configuration differs from the dramatic 2014 near-miss of Comet Siding Spring, which skimmed Mars at just 140,000 kilometers, forcing emergency protective maneuvers. 3i Atlas is much farther out, so there's no comparable risk to the spacecraft. Instead, the distance is just right for clean, sustained observations without danger from high-speed grit. From the Mars flyby, 3i Atlas keeps diving toward the Sun, reaching perihelion around October 30, 2025, at roughly 1.4 astronomical units just inside Mars's orbit. After that, it climbs back out. The closest pass to Earth will still be a very safe 1.8 astronomical units, approximately 170 million miles, late this year but the exit leg sets up additional vantage points. If the geometry cooperates, Jupiter system spacecraft could try opportunistic measurements in early 2026, and solar-watching missions like SOHO, Stereo A, Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter may catch it in their wide-field cameras near the Sun. So what are the major details scientists want to know? 1. What is it made of? Exactly. For composition, the gold standards are spectroscopy and imaging polarimetry. Instruments sniff for key gases like H2O, CO2 and CO, plus fragments like CN, C2 and OH. The ratios between water and carbon monoxide or dioxide are crucial. Our own Oort cloud comets show a range. 2i Borisov was unusually rich in carbon monoxide. If 3i Atlas shows a distinct chemical fingerprint that hints at a very cold birth environment, maybe the outskirts of another star's protoplanetary disk. Mars-based spectrometers and Earth-based larger telescopes can team up to track how these gases turn on as sunlight ramps up at perihelion. 2. What are the dust grains like? Dust tells us about the comet's thermal and collisional history. 
Scientists will measure dust-to-gas ratio, grain size distribution, and albedo by comparing reflected sunlight with thermal emission. If grains are unusually fine or oddly reflective, that could point to different processing in another system's disk. 3. What is the nucleus doing? The nucleus is hidden by the coma, but we can back out rotation period and jet activity from repeating patterns in the tail and the broadband light curve. If discrete jets flick on and off, maps of their timing and direction can reveal how the nucleus spins and whether certain patches are rich in volatiles that sublimate fastest. A stable rotation with few jets might imply a denser, stronger body. Chaotic flickering could mean a fluffy, fragile aggregate body. Two ends of a spectrum we've only barely explored with interstellar objects. 4. Is there non-gravitational acceleration? Outgassing can push comets slightly off a pure gravity path. Oumuamua's gentle acceleration sparked intense debate about its nature. With 3i Atlas, observers are looking for the same subtle nudge. Early reports emphasize a lack of strong, measurable non-gravitational acceleration so far, which, paired with an active coma, would suggest a comparatively dense, compact nucleus rather than a porous, super fluffy one. That conclusion could evolve as the comet brightens, but it's one of the most closely watched data streams. 5. How alien is its water? If we can measure the deuterium to hydrogen ratio in its water, we get a direct isotopic fingerprint. Solar system comets show a spread in D over H, and interstellar D over H outside that spread would be a headline result, hinting that planetary nurseries across the galaxy really do build chemically distinct comets. Perihelion is the best shot to catch strong water lines for this test. Mars offers something Earth cannot, a different line of sight and different phase angles for the same object at the same time. When you combine Mars-based views with Earth-based telescopes, you can triangulate features in the tail and coma in 3D, reconstruct the dust dynamics, and separate what's a solar wind effect from what's intrinsic to the comet. MAVEN is especially valuable because it carries IUVS, an ultraviolet spectrograph designed to study Mars's atmosphere, but also useful for detecting OH emission from water breakdown and other UV features in the comet's coma under the right geometry. ESA's Trace Gas Orbiter adds NOMAD and ACS spectrometers for infrared and visible and UV coverage. The synergy is the point. Multiple instruments, multiple vantage points, one interstellar target. A truly decisive finding from 3i Atlas would be evidence that falls well outside the compositional and dynamical range of known solar system comets. This could include atypical volatile ratios, such as an extreme enrichment in carbon monoxide or organic signatures that defy current models. It might also emerge from a deuterium to hydrogen ratio in its water, far beyond values measured in local comets, indicating formation in a markedly colder or hotter zone of another star's protoplanetary disk. Equally striking would be the absence of detectable non-gravitational acceleration, despite strong outgassing, implying an unexpectedly dense, monolithic nucleus, or conversely, a rapidly evolving spin state with chaotic jet activity, signaling a fragile body shedding material under solar heating. Any of these outcomes would fundamentally reshape our understanding of comet diversity across planetary systems. Scientists are preparing for a flood of data on 3i Atlas in the form of light curves, spectra, and imaging sequences. Research teams will refine the comet's orbit, both with and without accounting for outgassing, to measure any subtle non-gravitational acceleration, while also tracking how production rates of H2O, CO2, and CO evolve as the comet reacts to solar heating. With observations from both Mars and Earth, astronomers can deproject tail structures in three dimensions and estimate grain sizes, while color slope comparisons of the coma against known solar system comets will provide clues about dust chemistry. At perihelion, these findings will be cross-calibrated with solar observatory imaging to capture tail disconnections or sudden outbursts triggered by space weather. Taken together, these efforts mean that within weeks, we should have a clearer, more comprehensive sense of just how familiar or foreign 3i Atlas truly is. Every interstellar visitor is a sample return mission without the sample. We can't fly to another star to collect comet dust, not yet. 
But when a piece of another system flies to us, we can test our ideas about how common Earth-like ingredients are, how planet-forming disks vary, and how volatile inventories get distributed. That feeds into big questions. How often do rocky planets receive water and organics? How typical is our solar system? 3i Atlas is only the third data point, but it's a strong one because we're catching it with an armada of instruments at multiple angles across a broad wavelength range. A world away, on and around Mars, instruments are staring into the dark and catching photons from a traveler that was born under a different sun. Whether 3i Atlas turns out to be remarkably ordinary or quietly strange, it's telling us something profound. Planetary systems might be different, but they rhyme. And this week, Mars helped us hear the rhyme a little more clearly. If you like this breakdown, hit like and subscribe. Drop your questions in the comments. What single measurement are you most curious about? And what do you think? Is 3i Atlas just another comet, or is it something truly special?